House of Reps meets service chiefs. Senate extends implementation of 2021 Appropriation Act. And later on the program. To have a federal medical center in the village now is so germane. We find out why Honorable Adebayo Balogun feels there is no federal presence in the village. You're watching the Hallow Chambers on TVC News. I am CJ Su Adebayo. The leadership of the House of Representatives has sat down in a face-to-face -face meeting with the service chiefs to talk about the security situation in the country and get first-hand information about efforts to guarantee the safety of lives and property. At the end of the four-hour-long meeting, both parties agreed on the need to scale up security interventions and take war to the camp of the terrorists and other criminals across the country. The primary aim of any government is to protect life and property. And this is our core mandate as assigned to us by the Constitution, assigned to us by the mandate given to us. And the House is so worried. I believe after the speakers are uh, opening a uh, welcome message, we will have to dissolve into executive session because we cannot discuss our security matter on camera. This I believe. Let me, um, on behalf of the service chiefs and all those on the defense and security team, appreciate the speaker for this invitation. And we stand ready to answer the questions that you have for us with respect to you know, solutions, collective solutions to the defense and security issues across the country. What are you doing or not doing that you're supposed to be doing? Or what are you doing that you're not supposed to be doing? And how far, what else can we do? This House of Representatives had a security summit some time ago. An all important security summit. Everybody, everybody was there. And we made some far reaching, we kept some far reaching resolutions, which we were all part of. Those resolutions were presented to Mr. President uh, sometime last year by the whole leadership. And I believe many of you, many of the service chiefs were present, and you had copies of, the, of those resolutions. Uh, we want to find out how far with those resolutions, why have some not been implemented, what exactly is going on. The 2021 Appropriation Act will now run until the 31st of May this year. The extension was approved following the consideration of a bill to amend the 2021 Appropriation Act. The Senate, before considering the bill, suspended Rule 78, Subsection 1 of the Senate Standing Orders 2022 as amended to enable the upper legislative chamber to expeditiously introduce and pass the bill. Prior appropriation acts in the recent past were passed media and a such implementation was usually extended to the following year. However, these extensions were usually covered in the appropriation acts by a clause along the following line, and I quote, in line with the provisions of section 318 of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria, this act runs for a period of one month, starting from the day it comes into effect. A bill for an act to amend the 2021 Appropriation Act in order to extend the implementation year from 31st March to 31st May 2022 and for related matters, 2022 second reading, uh, reading taken, and the bill is passed. The chief executive of Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation has briefed the House of Representatives on the need to set up special courts to prosecute oil thieves. He blamed crude oil theft for the dwindling oil revenue accruing to the federal government. The revelation from the head of Nigeria's oil company shocked the lawmakers, but they want an end to this wastage. COVID-19 weathered out and we started seeing return to normalcy, the production started coming down. There, the average crude oil, not including the condensate, is 1.29 million barrels per day. Two motions 
of urgent public importance that I have moved, both in the 8th Assembly and now in the ninth Assembly. And it has to do with pipelines that have been encroached upon due to erosion. We're not here to make political statements. We are here looking for solutions. And we have to talk to ourselves in a way that we can genuinely and sincerely talk to ourselves. The way he spoke, I didn't even expect him to do the same. But the time has come. I think Nigeria is reaching a very good uh, time frame of moving forward. There was an altercation between the Deputy Speaker Ahmed Idris and a member from Edo State, Sergius Ogun, at plenary. The argument led to the rejection of a motion urging a probe into the alleged invasion of the Federal High Court, Uyo Akwaibom State, by some policemen. Edo lawmaker Sergius Ogun rose to challenge the Deputy Speaker for jumping over his motion to the one after it. So drama, I don't understand. You have the authority to say I will not take it. But what I say, what is fair is fair. I can't be, my, 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 my motion is listed and I'm here to take it. The Deputy Speaker insisted his action was deliberate because Sergio Sogun was busy making noise while plenary was on. Sergio Sogun took exception to the comment and challenged the Deputy Speaker to read to him the relevant portion of the House rules. If we want to add this to our order, our, our Not add this. I'm fine with it. Not add it. I know you have the authority because you are presiding. The confrontation went on between the two men until Sergio Sogun apologized to the presiding officer. My brother, my advisor, and the next speaker in the 10th Assembly, I wish to tender my apology. Mr. Speaker, I took conflict this morning with a lot of sugar, so my adrenaline was pumping. I am sorry, sir. House leader Halazana Dodogua called for disciplinary measures against Sergio Sogun, insisting an apology was not tenable. No one member can just rise here and operate in jungle only to take the advantage of saying, just I'm sorry. This is giving us a very bad example. This is it a jungle. This is an institution that must be respected by us who are members of this house. But the deputy speaker later gave the member an opportunity to move his motion. The leader went around convincing his colleagues to kill the motion in order to teach him a lesson. Wednesday, February 16, 2022, while Justice Toyin Adegoki was sitting at the Federal High Court in Uyo, Akwaibon State, some armed officers of the Nigerian police invaded the courtroom and took away one of the defendants in a matter pending before the courts. And true to his advice, members rejected the motion. Against the nay. The nay of it. The rejected motion seeks to probe into the alleged police invasion of the Federal High Court Uyo Akwaibom State. Joining me now on the program is Honorable Adebayo Balogun, representing Ibeju Leki Federal Constituency in Lagos State, a first time lawmaker in the House of Representatives. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you. Share with us your experience as a first time lawmaker in the House of Reps in the last three years. Well, being a first time, a first timer has been so challenging. Like, you know, our job is divided into two parts. First is to make laws. The other part is to represent her people. And when you talk about representation, it's about bringing the dividend of democracy to our people. That is the language they really understand. And that is the part people really appreciate the more. So in, in as much as we are doing a legislative function, trying to move bills, motions, support, and the rest, we are very conscious of the fact that people are expecting the share of what belongs to them from the federal post. And these are part of the things we actually be running after to ensure that you bring more schools to our area, you attract more uh, fiscal infrastructure, uh, empowerment, and all the rest. So this makes you move from pillar to post. You must engage all agencies that are relevant to your area. I'm from uh, an agrarian local government, though we are now moving to, to an industrialized one based on the 
uh, recent development, the free trade zone development, the deep sea port, and all the developments that were occurring during I assure you uh, master plan. And uh, we have to continuously engage agencies to ensure that we get something to our uh, constituency. Take us through the motion and bills you have initiated in three years. Well, uh, the major bills that actually affect my area. One is the one on the construction of the coastal road. Because, like I said, Ibejuleki has become the economic hub of Nigeria today. The biggest investments, one single investment in Nigeria or in Africa today, are now being situated in Ibejuleki. The Dangote refinery is the second largest in the world. Is situated in Ibejuleki. The deep sea port is the biggest in Africa. It's situated in Ibejuleki. There are a lot of other companies within the free trade zone. And uh, all these are along the coastal road. And we just have a single lane road on that axis. And it's very important if we don't want the area to become worse than Apapa, we must immediately expand that road to a commensurate one and uh, the bill was passed and i've been able to follow up with the federal ministry of works and uh, also the state government although help is not coming yet from the federal government but the state government has actually taken up the responsibility now to even move it from two lane to six lane uh, the right of way is being established they are working on it to ensure that before the end of this year, what work would have uh, commenced? And you know, Mr. Governor from Lagos State doesn't joke with his job. Uh, once he starts, he completes. Give an insight into the bill proposing a federal medical center in your constituency. As a follow-up to the consequence of the development that we're having within the area, there's need to also expand the social infrastructure, part of which is hospitals. The hospitals we have on Grana can no longer cope with the level of population that we have in the Bejuleki. Uh, some few years back, Bejuleki happens to be the smallest in size in, in population in, in Lagos State. But I'm sure by the time we do the next census, it's going to be ranked between one and third because of the influx of people. So to have a federal medical center in the Bejuleki now is so germane. And, uh, to ensure that we fast track this, I've been able to give one of the uh, health centers I facilitated within the local government to the Federal Medical Center, Ibutemeta, to be used as an annex because the health challenge is getting out of hand. So our plan is for us to have an, our own independent Federal Medical Center because the size of Ibejuleki is about one-fifth of total landmass of Lagos State, coupled with the development in terms of uh, population growth. That means in the nearest future, it's going to be so unprecedented. So we must have a federal medical center that will be an opportunity, that will be used as an opportunity to bring in, to attract federal medical, I mean, medical um, services from the federal government. It's going to be an opportunity for us to get medical service from the federal government if we have a medical center in Ibejuleki. The bill is an establishment bill and the challenge of funding for establishment like the FMC has been a major concern. Yes, one of the reasons we are having this problem is that we are not prioritizing our projects. We must look at projects that will yield returns in, in, in terms of necessity and also in terms of yielding returns in economically. Ibejuleki, like I said, is going to be at the economic hub of Nigeria. And uh, we should, we know that there will be, there will be side effects, there will be uh, external negativities that will come with all this development. There will be more accidents, there will be health challenges, um, even, even, even area of accidents too in area of work ethics within the industry, there will be uh, work accidents too that will be happening. So there must be medical facility commensurate with that development. So 
And you know in Lagos, we are still fighting for this special status. These are part of the things we are going to put together. Even if you are not giving us a special status, there must be things that must be done in areas that you are having development. If you are having big companies like the Deep Sea Port, Airport, Free Trade Zone, Refinery, I don't think having just one federal medical center will be hard for the federal government to do. Let's get through with the approval first in the in the area of uh, establishing it. I'm, I'm sure the state, all of us, the governor and every one of us will come together to see, ensure that uh, it's actually done. You alluded to the fact that there is no federal presence in Ibejuleki. Let us into reasons responsible for this. The only one that we have, which I also facilitated, is that it was an abandoned building uh, I think the Federal College of Fisheries and Marine Technology. They also have uh, an annex they were also building and they have, it was abandoned some years back. So I, I, I think I facilitated the resuscitation. They're also still working on it. So these are the two projects, if completed at the end of the day, we can say yes, we are having a federal institution. but. Uh, the other one is just in another. There's no bill yet to support the creation. That's the difference now. The Federal Medical Center now, we want it to be Federal Medical Center Ibejuleki. But the other one is in an annex of a school in Victoria Island. So, which they can decide to move anywhere. But uh, if we get this bill on, this will be the only one um, approved federal structure within the local government. In fact, if, even in, in terms of roads and electrification, the only ones we have been able to get in the Bejideki are the ones facilitated by the Federal House of Reps members. The Federal Government have not brought any project to that area as a ministry project. How well are you and your colleagues working with the state ministries to reverse the trend? Yes, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Getting out, get, going to the Federal College of uh, Fisheries. I had to go. I met with the provost. We sat together. I asked for the challenges they were having, and he told me what the problems are. Uh, during the budget circle, uh, the last uh, budget system, we were able to influence uh, the Ministry of, uh, I think, Health to, no, excuse me, the, the Ministry of Agri to facilitate some structures which they are about to, to start building their, uh, within the complex. And also in the area of security too, I've been able to talk to the council chairman, the Lekki SCD council chairman, to also build a police post for them. Because one of the reasons they, they, they gave is that area of security because it's by the lagoon. And you know there has been this uh, kidnapping through the, the water. So the local government chairman too have also promised to build, he has also included it in the in this year budget to build a police station or a police post at the gate of the campus. So with that, we we believe they should be able to start something by the end of this year or early next year. Ibejuleki is gradually becoming the economic hub of the state. How well are you and your people ready to tackle the challenges that may arise thereafter? Well, you see, um, when it comes to development, if it's not managed, the, if the negative externalities outweigh the positive, it becomes a problem for the people. For Nigeria as a whole, there's a lot for us to gain from Ibejuleki today. Like I said, Dangote Refinery is going to be refining 6, um, 650,000 barrels of crude daily. In that area, that's enough, more than enough consumption for us in Nigeria. Presently, we are using about fifty billion dollars to import uh, refined uh, products. That means Nigeria will be saving that foreign currency. That will be that will increase the value of the naira. Petrochemical too. What every table, every chair, every cotton, most of the things we use around are made from petrochemical. These things are imported from China and all the other countries. If it starts today, we are going to save billions of dollars too from that area. The deep sea port too is going to bring in so much money. So Nigeria 
is actually going to gain from the development from Ibejuleki. But for us as citizens of the uh, indigenous of that area, how do we ensure that this does not affect our health? Any prospects of job creation for your people? Yes, there are job creation opportunities. Even that go to refinery alone, during the construction stage, they, I think they have over 50,000 people working in that facility alone. Yes, some are within the areas too. But what we have been trying to do with our children too is for, for them to get trained in appropriate uh, courses. Because we don't want a situation where the only employment they'll be giving our people will be security and clerical officers. We want our children to, to be engineers within the facilities, to be medical doctors within the facilities, and to be able to move to top management at the end of the day. So we're also talking to them that they must read study relevant courses that will actually aid their development in those areas. And uh, recently, the state government is also uh, sponsoring some secondary school leavers on area of marine, uh, mar uh, marine technology studies. They will be taking them abroad and train them to become marine experts so that they'll be able to work in the deep sea port and some other relevant uh, 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 I mean, operations within the area. So these are things that we are trying to do because it's not just to say we create job. What kind of job are you creating? And what kind of job are children are able to get? And uh, personally too, I'm trying to start up a, a, a scholarship arrangement to encourage people in the sciences. So by next section, we'll be starting that so that to encourage more of, of our children to go into sciences because sometimes it's, it could be more challenging but with appropriate support we'll get more of them going to sciences. The National Assembly is obviously doing the best it can to redress Nigeria's worsening security situation but it does appear our relevant agencies are overwhelmed. The security operators themselves are a major problem. In a situation like this, we, we have to liberalize the system. One, we've been agitating for state police, yet the, the, the operators of our security system don't want state police. And that's the truth. They ensure that we could not even get it passed on our amendment list. If we don't have state police, there is little or nothing that could be achieved. Because crime is local and you cannot be posting police officers from Lagos to Kaduna to Zaria to uh, Imo and you are the best out of them. In, in, in the Western world, if you get employed in a county, you retire in that place. You get to understand the system. All this military getting involved in uh, internal security issues without carrying the police along, can never work. The police can do this job better if they are better funded and better equipped. Lagos have been doing well because of the creation of the RRS, which has been funded by the um, Police Trust Fund, created to support the police. So, but unfortunately, once you train these people, within some few months, they take them to other states and they bring new set of people. So we are not even getting the, the kind of benefit we should even get. Despite that, we are still better than some other states. You know, some few months, some few years ago, the Bado, the 1,000 boys, 1 million boys, and all this stuff in Lagos State was so terrible. But today, they've actually gone down because of the continuous investment the state is putting. So if you have a state police system, it's going to help a lot. If Governor Zulu is able to get the law, the state police law in place. I'm sure the Governor Zulu will get rid of all these bandits ravaging the state. You know, this man gets so committed and sometimes he moves out on his own, even not fearing for his life because it could be so frustrating when you see your people being killed anyhow. 
but yet we have spent over 1.6 trillion naira within the last 10 years on army uh, on army budget alone but yet nothing is coming out what happens with the class of thought that it might be used against the perceived opposition excuse me please this is a very myopic view election will come once in four years our lives will be forever I mean, which area? Lagos State was in a was in was a minority state at a particular time. We had just one state when we were AD. Were we bothered about the federal police being used at all? Can we say yes during during election? Some people can want to be smart, but we cannot because of that forget about day to day living. It is very important for us to continue to ensure that we do the right thing. Look, when people talk about governor using the police, and I look at look, when we are talking about everyday activities, today, when both go around kill people, do they kill APC or PDP or MPP? When they go and kill people, do they kill Muslim or Christian? You know, at a point in time, Boko Haram was almost made a religious thing. That is all on our program this week. You can watch a repeat broadcast on Sunday, 7 a.m. You can see this episode again on TVC News' YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching. See you next time.